James on LinkedIn. That's right. I take questions on LinkedIn, baby. Listen, I don't pay for the membership, but I'm hitting people up on the link. Yeah, that's what I call it. The link. I'm on there. I'm 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 networking, baby. You know, I'm trying to get people to see that I'm making this stuff. <laughs> This question is to detail good problem solving process. So dude, James hit me up and they're having a packaging issue. We don't come to a great solution on it. We have some ideas. What you're listening for right here is you're listening for the thought process that we're walking through, right? Because sometimes I think one of the most valuable things that we that we have as a brewer, sometimes we think, well, oh, I'm, 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 a, I'm a great recipe creator. Or, you know, I I understand flavor or, you know, technically I'm super intelligent. I'm super knowledgeable. Well, I will tell you this, man, honing your problem solving skills is it's a big part of it. And I was so impressed with this guy's process. Afterwards, I was so impressed with the process. I'm like, why? Why is he asking me? But anyways, here's this question from James. I hope you don't mind the random message, but I have a Q&A question that's driving me crazy. Full disclosure, I'm not a brewer, just an operations guy. Ha ha. Don't say just an operations guy. We have had issues with a p- hazy pail of ours turning gray, which we presume to be oxidation. Probably correct, right? I'm working on troubleshooting our packaging process, but was wondering if you've heard of this happening at all with hazy styles. I have. We're a really small team for as much beer as we produce, so I'm trying to get creative with my troubleshooting. Thanks a ton. I asked him what he was using for sanitizer, because as we were talking about before, you can oxidize with an oxidizer based sanitizer. And there's multiple places that you can be catching oxi- uh, oxidation. You could be catching in the bright tank. You could be catching on the canning line itself. And so we're trying to figure out, okay, so is it like a batch wide thing? Is it just every other can? And he says, thanks for the, pl- the reply. We use Burke Ox, which I'm assuming is an oxidizing sanitizer. We're only seeing this in intermittent cans, not batch wide. Okay. So there's so this means that we're probably looking at something on the canning line. So we can eliminate we can eliminate the bright tank. The retained samples we kept have tested fine as far as DO. We have yet to pull a can for testing that has had any issues, but we've received three complaints from the market. I think it's all been canned so far. My basic deductive reasoning tells me that it's a random seam issue, either related to the equipment or the can's ends, or can slash ends. They've had no issues with samples pulled during their run. They do DO checks. They have a C box. The Anton Par Piercer. So they've got they they've got some gear. It's it's a small operation, but they've got some gear here. Seller DO and Carb are all in spec. They retain uh, samples, all testing done. Kegs from the same batch seem to be fine. So you can see how he he's listing he's listing all the the, the process points where this stuff can be popping up, right? So super super good. I, I, w- I was really impressed with that. And then so then we're down to talking about the canning line, right? And then so I said, so all right, so what are you using on sanitizer for your canning line? You know, are you rinsing your cans with city water, with an oxidizing sanitizer, with a non-oxidizing sanitizer, sometimes with like sanitizing gases or whatever kind of gases or whatever people, there's a lot of things people use. I told him, you know, ultimately what you might be looking at here is if you haven't canned before, if you ding those, those little lips on those cans at all, you can be screwing up your seal. It's really a fussy little thing. Sealing cans is not easy. And it's something you really need to stay on top of. And it's not like every time you have a bad seal, you're going to see beer bubbling out of it. It, it, It's not necessarily like that. I mean, so so ultimately, we we kind of came to the conclusion, he's going to keep hunting stuff but we're, we're looking for some stuff potentially on the physical side um, because there was nothing sanitizer wise on the canning side that would suggest an issue like that and it all just kept pointing back to the can hopefully you found that worthwhile just the discussion we had on it because i do like the process you can see he was he was thinking about everything right down the line 
And, and I, I think that's the way we have to think as brewers. When a problem pops up, we have to get used to that prob problem solving process. You know, what's the next thing? What's the next thing? What's the next thing? And I often do that with brewer friends. Some of the people that I've had on that I've interviewed and going to interview in the future, you know, the first brewer interview I did, Rock Band Meter, We Talk Beer, Andy Gallagher, We Talk Beer, Chris Neff, We Talk Beer, Bill Gerds, We Talk Beer. So hit those people up because they help to build your process out. Anyways, hopefully that's of some value. Uh, for you uh, because I because I want to share it. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for watching. If you feel as if you got any value out of the video, please like and subscribe. There are also other videos that you can watch. They're gonna maybe be over here, or over here. Appreciate you watching.